So I'm sure all of this seems pretty abstract right now. So let's make it a little more concrete. In this class, we mostly focus on three big classes of production function. And of the three, actually only one of them is really important. So these three are called uh, you know, the perfect substitutes model or production function, the perfect complements production function, and the Cobb-Douglas production function, named after Cobb and Douglas. So let's go over what each of these three kind of look like. So perfect substitutes is maybe the intuitively simplest type of production function. It looks kind of like this. It's the quantity is equal to some, to just basically k plus l, okay? And we might have, we would normally have some kind of numbers in front of them. So a times k plus b times l maybe, okay? And the isoquants for this are super simple because they are just lines, okay? Straight lines all the way through. How do I know that's the case? Let's make this k and we'll make this one l. Well, we can solve this production function for k to express an equation for the isoquant, okay? So to do that, we need to subtract bl from both sides, and then we need to divide both sides by a. And in doing so, we obtain an equation like k equals q over a minus b over a times l. And this is basically the formula for any line, right? So this q divided by a is a constant up here. And then as we subtract off, as we add l, we subtract more and more. And we always subtract at a constant rate. So perfect substitutes, the name comes from the idea that these things are uh, one input can exactly substitute for another output if the proportions are right, OK? So a machine can exactly do the same thing as a laborer. So it doesn't matter if you have a lot of laborers or only a few laborers. You can always just plug in a machine to do the job for them, OK? Or vice versa. A human can just take the place of a machine, OK? Let's look, talk at the, uh, the kind of polar opposite case, which is perfect complements. Okay, perfect complements have a weird uh, function, so I'm going to start instead with drawing it. So these, uh, if this is a straight line, a perfect complements isoquant is as kinked as you can possibly get. It's a straight right angle. Okay. So this means as we go in this direction, we have more and, uh, and they have this kind of hard edge to them. So what is a perfect complement? Well, the function for this looks like this. Q is equal to the minimum, so this is a new function called the min, of A times K or B times L. What does that mean? That min function means literally Q is equal to whichever is smaller. And you know, whichever is smaller of A, K, and B, L. Okay? So if uh, K, suppose A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1. So then it's just equal to, then this example is just something like Q equals min of K and L. If that's the case, then if k is equal to 10 and l is equal to 1, the minimum of those two is 1, and so q is equal to 1. If k was equal to 1 and q and l was equal to 10, then the minimum of those two is still 1, and so q is equal to 10. And the idea here is that these things are perfect complements, and that means that capital and labor have to be paired together in exactly the right proportion and having a little bit of extra outside that proportion is useless. So the way I like to think about it is like, imagine the robots all need a driver, okay, or they all need an operator. And if you have a human without a robot, they can't do any of the work. It's too heavy for humans to do. And so having extra labor 
is meaningless. And so that means the production you get is entirely limited by the amount of robots you have if you've got a driver for each one, and any extra laborers you get on top of them are useless. They don't add anything to production. So we can imagine on the isoquant that that's captured by, uh, where's my little line here? If we're here on this point and we add more laborers but no extra robots for them to drive, output stays at exactly the same level, okay? We're not going up and to the right. Conversely, because every robot needs a driver, if we're here on this corner, every robot has a driver and then we get a shipment of additional robots but there's nobody to drive them, K goes up but L stays the same and there's no extra output that's produced because the extra robots just sit turned off in the, sh in like the parking lot because there's nobody to drive them and there's no, no way that they can do work, okay? It's only if we get the joint package of more robots and more workers in exactly the right proportion that we can produce more, okay? So we're limited by whichever is less, okay? In this case, so the marginal rate of technical substitution is sort of like either zero or infinite. Like these guys can't be replaced at all. Uh, or you need an infinite amount of extra laborers like to, to uh, replace one unit of robot, okay? In contrast, up here with the perfect substitutes, the marginal rate of technical substitution was constant, okay? They could always substitute between the two. The last example is Cobb Douglas. And Cobb Douglas is a preferred function among a lot of economists because it captures sort of these extreme cases uh, and it lies in between them, okay? So it's these sort of nice curves is what the isoquant looks like. And notice that these look kind of like uh, perfect substitutes in the middle. So in the middle here, uh, like in the fat pattern of that curve, it's almost like a line. And on the edges, they sort of start to look like, uh, so it looks kind of like a line here for a lot of the way. But then over on the edges, you approach sort of the vertical or horizontal directions of those perfect complements. And so a Cobb Douglas production function has this intuition that in the middle, like kind of when you have a mix of capital and labor, you know, uh, they're closer to perfect substitutes. So you give up some labor, you can replace it pretty easily with capital. But when you're on the extremes, when you're all the way over here or all the way over here, whichever unit is in scarce supply is really hard to replace. And that's kind of like being a perfect complement. So I gave the example before of farmers um, who have heavily automated their farms. And if you give up one laborer, it's really hard to replace them with extra capital. That's kind of like a situation where all the capital that's out there, all the machines that are working need a driver or they need somebody to work with them. And if they don't have it, they can't do any direct, they can't do any work. The Cobb-Douglas production function looks like this. We have capital raised to some power, L or alpha, and labor multiplies it, also raised to some other power. And typically there might even be some third term out here in front, I'll call it Z. It's just some constant. And we're gonna work a lot with these, okay? So in the next section we're gonna find the, you know, the next example you have to find the marginal rate of technical substitution for all these different types of uh, production functions.